Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, and you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with, him, with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all other. 
All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is a fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah! You are invited to be seated. Jesus said to them, Peace I give to you. And then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. There is, some, there is nothing more worthless than a deflated balloon. It's just an empty container. But if you put water in it, there is endless amounts of fun that can be found with balloon tosses and water balloon fights. Or if you put helium in it, it is a joyful experience to see that balloon pulling on the end of the string. And if you're sheltered in place, and you want to have some fun, just blow up a balloon and play indoor volleyball with it. Endless fun with a balloon in the house. Shoot, a simple balloon helped me in my first date with the woman who would become my wife. Really. A friend of mine knew how to tie up balloons into animals and whatnot. He knew how to tie them into balloon flowers. So I went out and got a pack of those long balloons, blew them up, and had my friend tie them up into a balloon bouquet. I introduced myself to Kimberly. How could she not say yes to a first date when an expandable latex a uh, balloon banquet came to her, a potential for a life together. 
from a blown up boy. Our gospel reading today continues with the events of Easter Sunday evening and the week following the resurrection. Mary has met Jesus, the disciples encountered an empty tomb, and now they are assembled in the house trying to figure out what it all meant. There they were, like a pack of deflated balloons, lifeless, without purpose. But Jesus comes to them and breathes into them resurrection life. He breathes a spiritual life into them that makes the presence of God real in the midst of the storms of their life. Listen again to that text. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. He was filling them with the peace of God's holy presence in the midst of the most fearful time of their life. Peace and fear are juxtaposed with one another throughout this story. What's more frightening? than a sudden tragedy. The passion story is the fear that comes from the arrest and crucifixion of Jesus. The fear caused the disciples to scatter and even, in Peter's case, to deny his faith. In our life, fear comes in many sudden ways. Life may have been clipping along just over a month ago Life as we were living it came to a screeching halt. I remember the news flash when an NBA basketball game was stopped right in the middle of it because of a confirmed case of COVID-19. A frightening series of events continue to unfold, and we are not sure about what will happen in the weeks and months to come. It is truly a frightening time. It's enough to deflate the confidence in the future we thought we had control of. It feels eerily similar to the emotions experienced when the doctor might say to us, we have your test results back, but you need to come in for a consultation for us to give them to you. That's the big goal of life. It's in these times that we begin to see the difference between mere belief and faith. This week I was talking to Jean Kolcheski, one of the directors of our SAC lunch program. She and Judy Stilwell have been navigating the rapidly changing waters of the pandemic to keep the volunteers and clients safe while we provide a nutritious lunch for anyone who is hungry. A plexiglass barrier has been installed in the serving window. Masks and gloves are required on all volunteers and the as the clients are now asked to line up six feet apart on dashes of tape. They are really getting good at their social distancing. Jean said to me, you know, Father Logger, there's a big difference between believing we are doing something good and being able to do everything necessary to do this safely for everyone. It's like you can believe anything, but it takes some real faith to actually get something done. I almost fell out of my chair. I said, Gene, that's exactly it. That's what our gospel is all about with the story of Thomas. It's the difference between mere belief and resurrection faith that actually gets something done. You can believe anything, but when fear and doubt crashes into our life, we need the breath of God. 
God's Spirit into our soul to give us strength and purpose and direction that we need for the difficult days ahead. We need that breath of God to get something done. That's all Thomas wanted. I don't think he was really doubting. The text never says that Thomas doubted. The disciples had life breathed into them, and they proclaimed, we have seen the Lord. They were filled with the presence of God that brought peace into their life in the middle of the devastation, confusion, and even death of Jesus. They were ready to get something done. They were ready to be apostles who proclaimed the presence of God in the Christ they encountered. Thomas just wanted to be able to say the same thing with true integrity. He just wanted to be able to say, I have seen the Lord. In our words, he was saying, you can believe anything, but you need the breath of God to give you strength and peace in the middle of the storm. That's the message of resurrection. It's encountering the presence of God in the midst of the realities of life. Easter faith is the invitation for Christ to be made known to us just as Thomas invited the reality of the risen Christ into his life. He wasn't doubting when he said, until I put my fingers in the nail prints. He was inviting the breath of God into his life. Doubt is very different than invitation. He was honestly opening his soul to the change from theoretical belief to faith that was substance to sustain him in the storms of life. In other words, he was inviting Christ to be in his life for the faith that can get something done. I'm going to move away from my script for just, just a second. As we began to sing today, I was overwhelmed with emotion because the glory was being sung. And then in the gospel is the alleluia, alleluia. Sing praise to the risen Lord. The truth is, is I was a little deflated this week. I need a need that crowd. After going hard for a while, maybe you feel it at home, your business and working from home, or the kids always around. There's a place you hit the wall, you, you feel deflated. But that breath of God, that's why we're gathering at the church. It's why we're coming together as the people of God, even though we can't be present in the building. We're, we're together now. We need that breath of God. And that's what our time of prayer, our time of worship, our time of gathering is our attitude. Because it fills us with the presence of Christ. And maybe our something to get done means helping the kids study. Maybe it means persevering through being at home, trying to work, work putting up the difficulties of putting on a mask as you go out into the public, remaining faithful in all the surroundings. I think that's what Thomas was about. He just wanted to invite him by grace and grace of God when he felt deflated. I think that's what it's about today, is being able to invite in the grace and the presence of God. When we feel deflated, Christ's breath is there to breathe into us, so that the things we have to do in life, we can get them done faithfully. Amen.
our worship continues with the Nicene Creed. If you're following along in the Book of Common Prayer, that can be found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People, Form 4, can be found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for the Church of England, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Larry, our bishop, for Father Mike, for Deacon David, and for St. John's staff, for the life and ministry of the Diocese of Arkansas, for the ministry of St. John's Parish, and for St. Augustine's Church. Lord, in your mercy, Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for all government leaders, especially President Donald, Governors Asa and Kevin, Mayor George, our city directors, and all our civic leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We ask your prayers for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, and for all those serving in the military. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We ask your prayers for those on our parish prayer list. Charlene, Chris, Jeannie, Wanda, Carl, Carlene, Sarah, Tommy, Orland, Dennis, Helen, Rebecca, Pat, Bill, Hester, Jackie, Matt, Larry, and Matt. We ask your prayers for the leaders of the National Institute of Health, for all those working on disease control, for Dr. Anthony Fushi and for Deborah Burks, and for all doctors, nurses, and first responders working with the COVID-19 virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to you mercy all who have died 
from the COVID-19 virus, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. As we continue with the confession, it's found on page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, my sisters and my brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. At this time, we have something special. We have, as you would normally find, a vestry member to be able to offer our announcements. And I'll introduce from our vestry our junior warden, Terry Glasgow. Good morning. And welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church. I'm Terry Glasgow, vestry member and junior warden. We are live streaming our Sunday service from our beautiful sanctuary in Fort Smith, Arkansas. If you would like to find out more about St. John's, our ministries, or if you have questions about the Episcopal Church, please leave a comment on our Facebook page or contact us through our website, stjohnfortsmith.org. That's S-T-J-O-H-N-F-S. Dot org. One of our members will be happy to chat with you. We want to thank Father Mike and our other members who provide this live service as we shelter safely in our homes. We also want to thank our members who have continued their faithful giving during this financial uncertainty. If you would like to make a donation to help support our ministries, you can go to our website, click on the Give button, and donate using PayPal or the Tidely app. Thank you again for joining us on this second Sunday of Easter as we gather together spiritually. We pray you and your family stay safe, remain faithful, and stay well. Peace be with you all. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our worship continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, the great thanksgiving found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb, who has sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. When we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving. And if you're following along in would like to receive the Holy Eucharist, but are not able to and impeded by the distance. Pray with me in this prayer of receiving spiritually. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessedness of this sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. together the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and evermore.